Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia and I'm the owner of Alicia Be Creative and today we're going to do another tutorial. It's not Tumblr related, but I love to add these to my Tumblr packages. I think they make perfect gifts and of course if they're going to smell good, why not? So I'm going to show you today how I make car freshies. Something that's super simple and easy and again, I am no pro in this, but I love creating these as sort of an additive and a bonus for my packaging. So hopefully this helps you create something new to be able to add to your packages if you're a small business owner like myself. So of course, everything I use in today's tutorial will be listed and linked down in the description box down below. You can even find discount codes and links to all of my social media down there as well. So before you leave, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I upload videos every Tuesday and Saturday and you don't wanna miss what's to come. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's tutorial. All right, so let's start by talking about what car freshies are. So essentially a car freshie is a air freshener that can be used in your car, it can be used in a room, in your house. It's really just an air freshener and sort of a homemade one versus one you'd buy in the store. So in order to make things, these you need a couple of things. So you need aroma beads and you need some sort of oils or things for your scents. So I buy most of my supplies from Stay Fresh with Peanut, but you can also find a lot of the supplies on Amazon as well. And I'll be sure to link everything down in the description box. So the first thing you have to do is you have to cure your beads. So that means that we're going to be adding the aroma beads as the base and then our oils on top. And we do this in an eight to two ratio. So eight ounces of beads for every two ounces of scent or oil that you're going to be using. And so that's typically the ratio. Now, if you wanted to make more or less, obviously you could just use a larger canister or a smaller canister and just adjust the ratio. Um, so you certainly can make less than or more than. I like to kind of do these in batches. So a couple jars at a time. That way I have a couple scents to choose from when I'm ready to make a bunch of car freshies for kind of goodies and packaging. So literally all I did was I add the freshie, the aroma beads, and then I added the oil on top. This oil is Black Frost from Stay Fresh with Peanut. And so I've added that and now I've just given that a good shake after I've closed up the top. And then I'll also make sure to put the scent and the date on top of that mason jar so that I can ensure that I know when I put these beads together. That way I know about what time and how long it'll take for these to kind of be cured. And so I'm going to also use this creamy nutmeg that I got in an oil pack from Amazon, which I'll link down in the description. So this is about an ounce of about an ounce of oils that come in these little bottles. So I only did about five ounces of beads. And just to kind of do that ratio, these are a bit stronger, I feel, than the Stay Fresh with Peanut. Like they, they kind of, the scent sometimes bother me when I'm mixing these from, from this specific pack. Never had any issues with the Stay Fresh with Peanut ones. I always love those. They smell absolutely amazing. But I'm just going to shake these up. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna let these sit for a couple of weeks. So it could take anywhere from one to two weeks for your scents and your beads to cure. And you're gonna know that they're cured because the beads will no longer stick to the sides and all of that essential oil will be completely soaked up. Okay, so now on to making the actual freshies. So I just have a regular cookie sheet here that I'm gonna line with a bit of parchment paper. You could also use wax paper if you wish to as well, but I'm just gonna line the bottom of this cookie sheet pan here, and we're gonna use just metal cookie cutters, and I have this silicone mold of some jack-o'-lantern pumpkins that's safe for baking in the oven that we're gonna be using as well. I like to mix some of the freshy beads after they've been cured with glitter and mica powders. You can also throw in glow powders which is what I'm also going to be doing with the orange batch and so then you just mix a batch or the entire jar full of the colors that you want I'm working in smaller batches for the sake of this video so I can save the rest of those for other molds that I have but what you're gonna do is just pour the approximate amount that you are going to be using of the beads into the cup and then mix your colorants and glitter into so you'll notice that this one this is the black frost and unfortunately it didn't cure the way I had intended it to and I think my ratio just might have been off and that surely could have just been from my scale um, but I am going to kind of go through this because I'm going to use these for the baking mold 
and be able to put these in my kids room so that we have a nice clean scent in the bedrooms so I just mix a little bit of Hulk which is a glow powder from stay fresh with peanut and then an orange mica powder that I got off of Amazon again everything will be linked down in the description box and you can obviously link those or go right to my Amazon store to purchase those items and anything else will be linked directly to the website that they belong to so mix that in just a little bit goes a long way give that a nice mix and stir with a popsicle stick and then I'm going to move on to my creamy nutmeg which is kind of my fall scent which I'm going to use for the fall leaves and the pumpkin as well as the uh, regular circle mold that, I'll, that you'll see me later use. So for this I'm going to add just a little bit of brown mica powder that I got from Amazon and then I'm using this bronze mica powder from 4k glitter which is the glitter from shop vinyl gallery. Of course I'll link everything down in the description box. Again give that a nice kind of mix. Make sure all of the beads have been coated with your mica powders and at this point you could choose to add a little bit of like fine glitter mica too which would be really pretty. I like to put um, glitter kind of in the base of the molds or in the base of the cookie cutters so that it's kind of of the forefront that you see once you demold them if you will but you could add the glitter into your aroma beads while you're mixing them with your mica powders as well so now we're going to get into getting these on the cookie sheet and getting the aroma beads into their cookie cutter so go ahead and line your cookie sheet with your cutters and you're actually going to want to grab something to create the hole. So I use roofing nails which have that flat edge bottom and you can see that these are not staying up and that is because these are not roofing nails. These are different nails that I just happened to find in the garage but I end up switching them out when I finally find my nails. But that's what's going to help you hold up the hole if you will the integrity of that hole so that you can put a string through it if it's going to be something that's going to hang somewhere so then you're just going to pour your freshly cured your aroma beads into the cookie cutter and I fill my cookie cutters to be about anywhere from half to three quarters full so the fuller that your cookie cutters and your molds are, the longer they're going to need to bake. And so because I try and stick around to that 9 to 10 minute mark, I like to just do about halfway to three quarters because that seems to be enough bake time to get them all to melt a bit into each other and be able and not have kind of any loose beads on top or anything after, after the baking process is done. So that second one I added just a little bit of some glitter down in the bottom. I'll link that down in the description box and then I just poured the beads over top. That way when I demold it on the one side you'll be able to see that beautiful glitter and you'll still have the beautiful scent of the aroma beads so that's pretty much what you do for like cookie cutters obviously you're going to want to use metal cookie cutters because those can go in the oven don't use something like plastic because that will melt and it'll just be a hot mess so now we're going to move on to the mold so you can use any silicone mold as long as it's something that's used for baking so perfect opportunity to go to your local craft store and hit up that baking section for some cute molds for the holidays I love to use these for freshies specifically because they come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes and they're just super cute so for these I'm going to be adding just a little bit of glitter into the base this is withered rose from my Asia creations and then I'm going to add the aroma beads over top so again this is the black frost ones the ones that did not fully cure so they're still a little bit wet I know that I'm probably going to need a little bit more baking time with these ones specifically because they're still wet um, so that's something to also keep in mind you definitely want to make sure that your aroma beads are completely dry that way you know that they're cured that way you don't have any issues with them not sort of curing or baking in the process and melting together because that's essentially what you're doing when you're baking them it's getting them all to melt together so it holds the structure of the mold that you've placed them in and when they're wet it takes longer and sometimes then that burns the beads which obviously isn't a good look so I am just going to fill up these um these sort of divots here with the beads and I'm filling these again to be about half to a quarter of the three quarters of the way full kind of just use your you know your guesstimate there it doesn't need to be perfect but obviously you don't want anything to the tippy top because that will take so much longer to bake which is not what you want because you risk burning your beads so once I've gotten these filled I will end up putting the roofing nails in but when I get upstairs to the oven that way I don't have to worry about walking so carefully that everything sort of falls all over the place so so we're going to take these upstairs to the oven. You're going to bake them for 
at 345 for eight to nine minutes. That seems to be what works best for me, but obviously your oven temperatures may vary. So I did throw in a pumpkin and a circular three inch mold as well upstairs with the extra beads I have. But after I've baked all of them, I do let them kind of cool a little bit. I don't let them cool completely because if you do let them cool completely, it's almost impossible to get your, um, your aroma beads like out of the molds. It can be really difficult. So I wait until they're just warm for me to be able to touch and then pop them out. That way I don't have any issues with, um, you know, them sticking and me not being able to kind of demold them at all. So I'm just going to demold the rest of these and then remove the roofing nails. That way I have a nice hole to be able to insert the sort of string or whatever we're going to be using to be able to hang these. And then this is kind of what they all look like. So I did do again, a circle mold as well, which you're going to see in a moment. And so now I'm just going to let these kind of fully cool off, if you will, so that I can really handle them. And then we can begin to kind of string them, add any decals. I did get a little bit of parchment paper stuck on a couple of the leaves. I don't know why they got stuck. I've never had an issue with using parchment paper, but of course today I did. Um, so I did just take like my, my craft knife and just peel up those little pieces of parchment paper that got stuck. But all is well. And so let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So at this point, now that they're cured and fully cooled down, I'm going to go ahead and just use a pair of scissors and just cut any of the pieces of beads that are kind of sticking straight up. So you'll notice sometimes when you make your freshies that sometimes one side will like be super tall and sort of like real like jaggedy. And so I'm just taking my scissors and just along the top edge there, kind of what would be like the top rim of your cup, just trimming anything that looks kind of weird or funny. So you don't want to trim too much because then it will kind of look oddly shaped. So I definitely would be careful. Just cut the ones that are kind of really sticking up and looking kind of funny and really messing with the integrity of the shape. So we kind of have everything done here. And so now that everything's kind of shaped up and trimmed up, we're now going to do a little bit of decorating. So decorating is completely your choice. You can do this quite a couple of ways. I like to personally use like fabric paint to decorate. I feel like it's the best and easiest way, but I'm also going to show you that I do sometimes use printable vinyl, especially for my circle molds because I can put really cute little sayings on those um, because it's just a, a three inch circle or whatever size circle um, metal cookie cutter you're using and you can easily design any of that stuff in Cricut and Silhouette. So I'm just going to make sure that the holes kind of all are there as well. Sometimes I'll just use like my Cricut tool, like that really pointy piece, like that weeding tool that you can get from Cricut and just kind of poke through the hole uh, and trim around that if I have to. And then I, it's on to decorating. So like I said, I like to use kind of fabric paint as my go-to for decorating. It lasts really long, really simple and easy to dry. You just leave it overnight and it, pr it pretty much is dry by the next morning. So on the pumpkin, I'm going to add, of course, leopard print. You guys already know. So I'm going to do a little bit of hand, hand drawn leopard print on this with some black fabric paint. And then I'm also going to use the fabric paint here to just color in the jack-o'-lantern faces on the four pumpkins that I created um, in the baking silicone mold. So you just use whatever paint you want. You also could add glitter if you wanted to. I typically don't. I just like to kind of go with the fabric paint look, usually because I'm adding glitter to the actual beads before I bake them. So I don't feel the nece necessity to add the glitter on top, but to each their own, you definitely can decorate these in a lot of different ways. I definitely encourage you to test things out, figure out what works best for you. So now that these are completely decorated and I'm satisfied, I'm going to let them sit until the paint is completely dried. For me, that was overnight. So at least 10 to 12 hours that I waited before picking these back up to finish them up. Now that everything's dry, it's now time to just kind of finish these up. So I did end up going into Cricut and just creating a little decal and image. I grabbed this image from Creative Fabrica. I'll link the My Favorite Color is Autumn decal or SVG down in the description box. I just printed that on printable vinyl and just literally stuck it to my Freshie, the circle one, just like a sticker. Worked perfectly, worked like a charm. You could also do this with cardstock and just kind of glue them down with hot glue. That's also an alternative as well. Um, and now really what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding our string. So I'm using some of this string that I picked up from Amazon. You can use twine, you could use regular beading string, whatever you have on hand that you feel is going to um, hold up your car freshies over a period of time. Most people for the most part are hanging them in a room or hanging them along their car visor. So just think about using something that is going to be, you know, 
be able to hold the weight of the freshie um, in those kind of situations and places. So I'm just going to string all these up. Of course, I'm not going to make you sit through and watch me do this. Um, but something I also wanted to add is that you can also add beads to the top of these as well. My string was a little bit too thick for me to be able to add beads on top, but stringing beads to the top of these as well really also does give an absolutely beautiful look. So that's an option as well if you wanted to add or string some beads to your string um, before tying up the ends. I like to keep the ends of my strings, um, like the amount of space I should say, pretty long, mostly because you don't necessarily know what the customer is going to be hanging these up on. And I wanna make sure that there's enough space for them to be able to hang it on whatever they're choosing to hang it on. Certainly if they wanted to to make the string shorter they could easily do so, do so by cutting off the excess and then just retying it but I do like to kind of leave an excess of string there just in case they're going to be putting it around something like a car visor or something where having too short of a string could really make it difficult to get it around an object like that so I'm just going to continue to finish stringing these I won't make you watch this entire process of me stringing them because that would be really boring and that is kind of it but let's go ahead and kind of finish these up and I'll show you the final look so now that everything is all strung and everything is tied up, I'm just going to kind of package these up. So I like to use these like uh, clear holographic bags. I got them off Amazon. They're the five by seven size. And I like to use a larger size because I like to use larger molds. And so I just literally package them just like that. I'll put a little thank you sticker on the front because again, these are meant to be just like additives to a package. I usually kind of include that in the thank you note, kind of what it is, if you will. But you could also add a carefully created sticker on the back that kind of tells people what they are, how long they last, which is anywhere from kind of four to six weeks, just depending on your beads. But I like to err on the side of caution and usually we'll put about four to six weeks. But this is what everything looks like when done. Now let's take a look at the final results. So I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.